All right, time to work on the ailerons. Let's get try to get the uh, aileron servos installed. Again, we have to work with the IDS systems. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut the channel. Um, there's a uh, pocket here for a Dean's plug, but it doesn't actually go all the way through, so you have to cut that channel yourself. So I just put a piece of tape here. And I'm just going to go on kind of the edge of the, the Dean's plug here and go perpendicular to the wing root. And just draw a little line. And I'm going to do the same thing once again on the other side. This will just help me gu this will just help uh, guide me so I get that cut out generally in the right place. I also have to come in here and cut a hole in the servo bay. So now I'm going to get a uh, get my paint pen here and I'm just going to eyeball a triangle or sorry, triangle. Obviously I failed geometry. Uh, rectangle about the size of the Dean's plug doesn't have to be perfect it's hard, for, hard for you to see that now I'm going to use Dremel tool with this uh, composite cutting bit on it and you just got to come in here in the root and you want to make sure you're parallel with the wing because you don't want to poke through the top or the bottom so just kind of hold it pretty parallel you go very slowly And what I did there was I kind of, once I got this started, I rested the shaft or the shank, the non-cutting portion, kind of in the pocket as a guide. And used the walls of the pocket to help me out. Um, now, I'm going to cut from the servo side. But I'm, I'm basically just going to remove the skin. I'm not going to actually try to make a channel or a hole. I'm just kind of going to get the skin. And that's it. All I did was break through the uh, carbon skin, and I can use files to clean that up later. Now you can use a piece of brass tubing and sharpen one end, or you can use a file, a round file. Um, I actually have this long, it's probably a 3 millimeter, 8 inch drill bit. And I'm just going to send this in by hand, I'm trying to get in the center of this hole. 
just get it started a little bit and then I just want to check and make sure I'm parallel and I'm not. I'm a little angled. So just adjust that. Send it through a little more. Check it again. It's looking pretty parallel. Parallel to the skin. And we'll just send this through, and I have my marks here so I can use that as a guide. Try to aim for that. Okay, that's just going to basically uh, just open up one channel and that'll help me feed the uh, files through. So from now it's just a matter of getting some files in here and opening up that hole. That was a round file. I'm going to move on to this square file. That's basically it. You know, you just keep working this. Got a flat file. Right, I'm going to keep working that till I'm satisfied with it and I'm also going to go in from this side and just clean that hole up a little bit but I'm not going to poke through a lot just I'm going to use just the tip of the file and just clean up that uh, opening on the servo side all right finished up the channel and while I'm kind of grinding and sanding I'm going to go ahead and uh, scuff up the servo bay because we want to get rid of any mold release and provide a good surface for bonding. I'm using a 100 grit sandpaper. You can use anything similar, really. Getting this portion behind the arm is a little tricky, so I kind of use a combination of things. Just use some files, just try to scratch up the surface. Then the 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 frame's gonna uh, also bond to the the sidewall here, so I'm gonna 
stuff that up a little bit as well. Now the um, the bays also have a chamfer on the base or on the floor, so you want to make sure you get that too. And I just like to use a exacto knife that has kind of a broken off tip. This is a dull blade. And I'm just going to scrape on those chamfers. I'm not putting any pressure, just dragging the knife across. Alright, that should be good. And as always, you're going to want to wipe down the area. Just rubbing alcohol. See a shiny spot right here. I'm gonna cross hatch a little bit. All right, let's move on to prepping the frames. Okay, I've already prepped one frame. Um, here it is. I did a little bit of work to this, so I cut off a lot of this portion. You can see from this guy. There's this pad here. This would be used in a molded wing and it would go under the skin and this kind of knurling is for adhesion. But for this application we don't need that. And I chopped off the other bearing support here just maybe to save a quarter gram of weight or whatever. Um, so you want to cut this kind of flush with this side, this bottom side right there so just cut that off and if you want you can remove the bearing support you're you're not going to use and these are these are uh, KST X08 frames so it might this might be a little different for other types of servos but regardless for the ailerons you're going to want to use the smallest IDS hub here so the one on the very end the very teeny tiny one that's the one you're going to want to use okay so after I cut this off, I sanded this surface down, uh, probably removed maybe half a millimeter or a millimeter of material from the surface, uh, sanded the top a little bit, and this is actually a pretty tight fit into the servo bay, so on the um, side towards the hinge line, I actually sanded um, this little step off. See there's a step right here? A little lip. I removed that. Okay. And then I've scuffed up the bottom. I've put some tape over the holes for the screws just because I don't want epoxy getting in there. Um, could come into play later if you take the servo out. Uh, you could get some print through on top of your wing. And again, we have those chamfers at the bottom of the servo bay, so I did sand a chamfer into this edge and a little bit into this back edge here, the one towards the hinge line, and slightly here, but it's pretty thin on the back side, so you can't really get much, but it's okay. 
So let's just, I'll show you how this looks in the wing. Put this guy in here just to give you an idea of how it looks. You can see the, the, the tray is actually a tight fit into the bay. And um, before I had trimmed that step off this side, it, it didn't really wiggle around at all. So it only has about a millimeter of play front to back. And span-wise on the wing, there actually isn't any play. It kind of locks itself in there. And uh, I was hoping that the servo arm would line up perfectly with the IDS hub um, without any modifications but that's why I sanded about a millimeter off the servo frame on this side because it was misaligned slightly so I had to get the tray going that way a little more and I've also as I did in the um, flap install I have taken a file and on the the IDS hub I've sanded like this just to make sure the arm in here is a loose fit and I've sanded the arm a little bit on both sides and I concentrated more on this side because again uh, we're trying to get some clearance here so I sanded the arm sanded the hub with a file and that just made the parts fit together real nicely without any binding or it's not tight you know again the small hub and I did put some grease uh, on the hub before I pushed it in because there is no bearing here alright I'm gonna modify the other frame and then we can move on towards uh, gluing the, the frames in okay let's prep our other frame just gonna cut off these parts trees those aside so what we're going to want to do well what I'm going to do is uh, cut off a portion of the frame here so I got a cut off wheel on the Dremel So I'm gonna I wanna make these opposites. So we're gonna cut off you don't have to do this, but if you want to try to save like a tenth of a gram and you're stupid like me, you can do this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make these frames look like mirror images of each other. So I'm gonna cut off this bit here. Yeah. 
I just have to remove this pad. By the way, if anyone's got a good suggestion for a Dremel alternative, please let me know in the comments. Cause I'm, I've, you know, I've never been happy with Dremel tools. The bearings always go bad real quick, and they make tons of noise. So if anyone's got a good suggestion for a quality alternative tool, I'm all ears. I'm gonna get rid of these nubs up here. Get rid of the cutoff wheel, put the sanding drum on. Go ahead and start that chamfer. Finish it off with the uh, sandpaper. And then, i got to cut this step off there, so I'm just going to use the tool. Okay, let's switch over to some sandpaper. Try to sand the chamfer into the bottom of the frame. I'm going to sand a little bit off the back side of this frame too. Because <clears throat> if I recall, I think I had to do that to get clearance on that chamfer.
vacuum this up a little bit. I'm going to stay on the top of this guy. So here's how she looks. So you got a chamfer on this edge, and the edge pointing towards the hinge line, we have a little bit of a chamfer also. Sanded this side, trim the back up. That's what the front looks like there, or the bearing portion. I'm gonna clip off the small horn. And there's always some like nubbins sticking off these, so I like to file those down. Okay, next thing is I'm going to file the arm of the hub so the arm fits real nicely. I think you guys get the idea. I'm also going to file the arm on the uh, tip panel itself. So I'll just continue with this and get back to you. Okay, real quick, uh, with these X08 frames, if you're going to use X08 or A08 or HS08 horizontal mount servos, you have to glue these little braces in, which go right here. You can see this side I didn't glue it in, this side I did. That's what it looks like. So go, so go ahead and do those if you're going to use uh, horizontal mount servos. If you're using X08 vertical mounts, you will use uh, one of these braces here. So it fits several servos, the same servo frame. Alright, I think we're ready to get some epoxy in here and glue these frames in. Put some epoxy in the bays. A little tricky because the arm is is in there and kind of can get in the way. You don't want to get epoxy on the arm. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is try to slip. Notice that I. I didn't put any epoxy down on this side because I don't want it to ooze under the hub but we'll secure that later so we'll get slip a frame in here I have to bend the aileron in the down position There we go. Okay, so the frame's in there. This is going to get a little tricky. Uh, I need to... What do I need to do? Should I put the servo in first? No, I'm, I, I, what I'm going to do is um, try to attach the IDS arm to the 
output shaft there so see if we can make that happen get a pin Sometimes this goes really easy, sometimes you end up messing with this for like 20 minutes trying to align the uh, pin to the arm. Let's see what happens. Oh, I <laughs> got it. Got it, got it. I hope the other one goes the easy. Use something to push the pin in. You don't want to push it in too far that it jams against the side of the tray. There we go. Okay. All right, all right. What next? I have cut some plastic baggy material and I'm going to try to slip this in under the arm and the hub just like that. Now we can try to get our servo in. I'm going to center the servo so it's plugged into my servo tester. Get it centered. One quick thing I'm going to do is Gonna put some of the silicone grease on the output shaft just because it sh hopefully it'll help it go on. Sometimes they go on easy, sometimes it's a real struggle, so doing this might just give us a little bit of an advantage. Okay, now the tricky, tricky part. You don't want to you don't want to jam the servo in because you don't want to mess up the uh, spline in the IDS hub. But that one actually went in without too much fuss, so pretty happy with that. Okay, I'm going to use my Exacto knife. Actually, I'm going to use this little piece of metal with a pokey bit on the end. I'm going to punch holes in the plastic where the screws to mount the servo goes. These are the mounts or the restraints. Come off one of the parts trees with the servo kit. Try to 
Try to get them in position. Need some screws, four screws from the servo kit. gonna get started I'm not gonna not gonna drive it all the way in got the other mount Last screw, all right. Looking okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten these guys up. Don't put too much force on them, you don't need much. Perfect. All right, now, 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 we have to Let me zoom out. I'm going to try to use the gauge right that came with the kit and I'm going to try to tape up the surface so that it's zero it's actually really close where it's at uh, Man, should I mess with that? It's about one millimeter down. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so let me just turn this over real quick. I don't think that'll fall out. Get some tape here. I always like to fold over a piece of the tape. So I can make so it makes removing it easier. Let's see here. I'm gonna put Let's see how that looks. Too much. There we go. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna get another piece of tape. Again, I'm gonna fold over one end. And then I'd like to tape the root up. Piece on the bottom, wrap it around like that. Perfect. Okay, so that that guy there is basically done. So when I get the other side done, I'll put weights on this to hold it down while the while the resin cures. All right, 
basically done here I went back and applied some of the epoxy on this edge from the top um, that way hopefully it won't seep down and get under the IDS hub um, so what I'm going to do now is just set the panels aside I'm going to put a piece of weight on top here while the epoxy cures and we'll let it sit overnight and we'll get back to it all right we're going to prep um, sort of a small sub harness for the wingtip panels to go from the servo bay to where the Dean's plug goes. Now you could just run the servo lead alright we're gonna prep sort of a small extension to go from the aileron servo bay to the Dean's pocket channel, Dean's connector pocket at the root of the tip panel. Uh, you could just install the servo here and run that wire out and solder it to the Dean's plug, but you're going to have to glue the Dean's plug in here and that will become basically a permanent installation. And if you need to repair or change the servo, you're going to have a really hard time. You're going to have to cut wires, do some soldering. And especially if you need to do it in a contest situation, it's going to be a nightmare. So I'd much rather have the servo set up where I can just unplug it in the servo bay, pull it out, and, and change the servo. So that's what we'll do. I've already made up one. So this is the Dean's plug here, and we got our wires soldered up to it. And then on this side, we have the servo connectors, and I, I, I have yet to put the... Um, the plastic connector on there but we'll do that after we run the wires through the aileron channel so this is the way you want to um, wire this up there's four pins you're only going to use three of them so it's going to go negative positive signal so the pin that's spaced further away from the other three pins is negative and then going from right to left you have positive and signal so let me show you what that looks like on a plug that's not soldered up so we have negative positive signal and uh, before we glue these into the tip panels we're gonna do some some work to make sure everything fits together properly so first thing we're gonna do is take this guy and we're going to grind off the steps on both sides so I'm just gonna use a Dremel with a sanding drum okay so I went ahead and I I ground down those steps and I actually sort of put a taper on the back side of this connector and you'll see why I did that in a minute so um, so when you grind down that step, go ahead and kind of file an angle on both sides. And then I also um, scuff this up with some sandpaper and a tip of an X-Acto knife so that it get good adhesion to the epoxy when we epoxy it in. Okay, I have the center panel here and a tip panel. And I have the joiner in the center panel. This is a really kind of important step. So take note of this. Uh, just go ahead and take your Dean's plug before you solder on the wire um, and plug it into the center panel like that. And then take your tip and go ahead and put that on. And grab by the uh, joiner box. That's the strongest part and you're just gonna slide them together and you'll notice that uh, I don't know if this is a design flaw or, or what but uh, it actually hits on the on the tip on the bottom side of that pocket for the Dean's plug the Dean's plug kind of hangs up there so you're gonna want to test fit this before you do the wiring and put epoxy on the plug and all that 
And uh, I'm telling you this from experience, okay? So, because I kind of had a nightmare with my light model. Um, but I figured it out and I got it done, but I wish I would have test fit it first. So then, once we know that, just go ahead and pull these panels apart. And all you got to do then is... Just get some files. You know, I, I won't I won't go through the whole thing, but just get get some files and just work that uh, pocket for the Dean's plug a little bit on the bottom side or whatever side that hangs up. File it down a little bit, test fit it again. If you need to file it down some more, do that, blah blah blah, keep going until you get a real easy fit in there with the Dean's plug. Once you do that, we're ready to go ahead and put the uh, wire through and um, glue up the Dean's plug. So, I think I made my uh, channels in here big enough that I could probably just shove these through without much hassle, but we'll see. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, before I even do that, so you kind of got to think ahead, right? I'm going to get a Q-tip, and I put some rubbing alcohol on it, and I'm just going to wipe out this, this pocket to clean it up a little bit, because I did file this, so there's bound to be some dust there. Okay, now I can try to feed this through. Hopefully. Yep, went through pretty good. You'll notice I have a different uh, servo frame in here. It's because this is my strong model, and I'm building three at the same time. So for this, I decided to 3D print my own frames and third bearing holder. Uh, it was kind of a neat project, but you know, honestly, if I had to do it again, I'd just use the regular servo ROM and stuff. Okay, so we'll put this through, and now we can put a plug on that side. So I'll just grab a plug here. You put it on the right way, obviously. See, I, I never really bother putting the sleeves over these because. Um, that adds a lot of thickness and you don't really need it. I just plug the other side in and wrap it with a piece of electrical tape. It makes it easier to tuck into the, some of these tight servo bays because usually there's not a lot of room there. So that's looking really good. Um, okay, so that's done. Now, what I highly recommend you do is before you get much further than this, okay. So one thing I, I wanted to mention that I forgot that I did before I put the wire in here is I took this extension before I put it in, and I plugged it into the uh, center panel. And then I took the fuselage harness that plugs into the root of the center panel toward, this is the fuselage side. I, I plugged the fuselage harness in there, which is uh, this guy here. So, you know, I just plugged in like that. And 
this is the aileron lead and I plugged this into the servo tester and just made sure the servo moved and everything works fine um, and it did so that's great uh, definitely better to check that and make sure your harness works everything works before you glue the Dean's plug in and get your servo bolted in there and all that stuff just you know just think ahead of the process and just make sure all, all your work is good because you could you know if you're crimping these guys you could get one of these crimps bad and it cannot have a connection or you know something along those lines so you want to just double check everything make sure everything works alright so where am I at with this okay I did also um, shorten the the lead on the uh, the servo this is x 8 H uh, plus so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reinstall these servos and then uh, we'll tape up these connections and then we'll work on gluing the Dean's plug. Alright, ready to get this thing glued in. Uh, I mixed up some epoxy with a little bit of cabosil. And I'm going to go ahead and apply some. I don't think we need much in this case because it's a pretty tight fit. Okay, that should do it. Now the tricky part. Somehow I have to put the wing tip onto the center panel and connect the Dean's plug. I have a paper towel with alcohol on it handy just in case things get messy. Alright, it's been a day, so the epoxy should be fully cured on that Dean's connector. And I'm just going to try to separate these wings. So I'm just going to kind of put the, my hand lightly on this side and grab the, the root from the other end. And just try to wiggle it apart. There we go. Let me show you how this looks. So you can see there's uh, lots of epoxy that oozed out and this should just come away really easily. Just like that. So you just go around here and just lift it up and kind of flick it off and use your finger, exacto knife, and clean it up. That comes out pretty clean when you're done. And on the uh, other side, there was no um, real transfer. Let's just take a look. So this side's pretty clean. I'm not really going to worry about that. So I put the servo back in, and I'm uh, 
just going to bolt it down. So we need these little plates here. And the screws. Okay, and then I'm going to connect up the wires and make sure you have them going the right way, like that, and then take a piece of electrical tape. Just gonna wrap it over these connectors so they don't come loose and also they don't short on anything just in case. And then we gotta tuck this guy in the bay. And I think like that will be perfect. So for that going to use a piece of double sided tape doesn't have to be a big piece I'll just put it right in the middle give it a squeeze Try to get the backing off, which oftentimes is a pain in the butt. And then we'll try to get this where we want it. And I'll just give it a push. And these wires can just tuck in. Like that. So that's what we're left with. And then we can move on to putting the the aileron the servo bay covers. We'll just see how that fits. And looks like we're gonna have to round off the corner slightly to kind of hold up the the fit. Got some 220 grit sandpaper. It's gonna kind of flat the corners off like a 45s. And then go back and round them. See if 
that was enough. Perfect. Okay. Now, I'm just going to get a paper towel, a little bit of alcohol, rubbing alcohol here. I'm just going to wipe the area. And then uh, I'm going to prep my tape that I'm going to use here. Right, I'm using this automotive pinstripe tape I got from uh, Amazon for the servo covers. It's, uh, it's probably an imperial measurement, but it's about 12 millimeters wide, so I guess it's that half an inch. Um, you can get this in different colors and stuff too, so it's pretty convenient. And it's pretty durable. Or you could use clear tape or whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this. Try to get it like halfway on the cover. Just like that. Do the front as well. That might actually be enough. Do the sides, and again, I'm just going to try to get it in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, it never is. This stuff's kind of flexible, too, so you can kind of tweak it as you go. Alright, there we go, that's done. Basically done now, I'm just going to plug the tip panel into the center panel and get that fuse harness on it and check the aileron movement. Panel's connected and the fuselage harness is plugged into the center panel and that's in turn plugged into my servo tester. So let's check the aileron travels. Alright, that looked good to me, so I think we can call this one done right here. We assembled the uh, tip panels on the Eternity, got the aileron servos in, did a little bit of wiring, and a few other little minor things. Um, again, this is not really an instructional video of how to exactly do this. It's just something to help you along the process. You can certainly do it any way you want, and maybe some of the things in this video will help you out. Uh, I think one of the key takeaways here is to dry fit the Dean's plug from the tip to the center panel and make sure that fits well with a little bit of gap all the way around the Dean's plug before you make the wiring harnesses and glue the plugs in. So I think that should wrap it up for this video and the next one we'll do the uh, fuselage nose pod. Um, we'll work on getting the harnesses installed here and the layout for the battery, speed control receiver and all that getting the motor mount in the nose and doing the CG before we glue the mount in permanently. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next one.